All right, so we'll go through some um, more examples. Uh, here's an example of Derek Seltzer's um, mural Scream icon. This is, a, I believe, a Los Angeles-based uh, um, piece of uh, street art. Green Day used this uh, in 2009, six years later, um, as a backdrop for uh, one of its tours. And you can see here um, how they used it. Now, they got sued by Derek Seltzer, and Green Day claimed that their use was a fair use. So let's look at, let's panam this, okay? So we panam it, we look at purpose. Does it add value, or does it simply exploit it? Now, you can see in the, um, in the Green Day piece, it's a backdrop of their tour. Um, I mean, they put a cross through it, they add color to it, it's... it's not fully exploited. I mean, it's clearly a part of the collage, but it's not fully exploited, exploited and fully derivative, and therefore it's a fair use under purpose. Nature of the original, we know it's creative, therefore it's not a fair use. They use the whole thing under amount and the heart of the work, therefore not a fair use. And again, lastly, market harm. Does it create market, market harm? Not really. The judge said, you know, it's transformative and not overly commercial. Meaning like, of course, a tour is a commercial activity. But this is a backdrop for stage. This isn't like an album cover or a promotional shoot. Something that's being like commodified and bought. And so this is a lived experience. And so they didn't, the judge didn't think it was overtly commercial and therefore ruled on behalf of Green Day and this is a fair use. I want to talk about uh, something called Vara and I'll give us some examples of what Vara is. Vara is the Visual uh, Artist Rights Act um, of 1990. Okay, This basically gives artists a moral right, the right to control their art and how their art is used uh, even if they don't own the copyright on it. OK, um, it basically means that, like, uh, given a few circumstances, if your work is a work of recognized stature, it's not made for reproduction and there's only 200 copies, meaning the piece of street art or, or whatever, um, and it's iconic uh, and maybe you don't own the copyright on it. Maybe you did the, a wall that was commissioned or and you transferred the copyright or whatever, or your copyrights expired. Uh, you can still prevent the artwork from being destroyed or mutilated. And I'll talk a little bit about um, what, this, what this means. This actually comes from the Berne Act of 1989. I'll talk more about this, but this was the international copyright treatise that the United States signed into in 1988, which basically said, hey, yeah, finally we'll respect other countries' copyrights. But part of that was VARA. And basically, VARA covers anything, paintings, drawings, uh, prints, sculptures, photographs, street art, aerosol art. Um, the work has to be of recognized stature, meaning that it's known, it's, it's famous, I, it's iconic. It doesn't have to be like world-renowned or world-famous, but it can be famous in a small community. Um, uh, it's made for exhibition only, and less than 200 copies have been, have been made of it, if any copies at all. Uh, wink, hint, nudge. Vara is not copyright. Uh, it has nothing to ne necessarily do with copyright because you may not own the copyright on, on the work at question, but you can still protect it from being mutilated, destroyed. I'll give you an example. Y'all are probably familiar with the pioneer uh, statues on campus, right? They're quite iconic. If you know anything, when People do the recruiting tours, the Yellow Jacket people. Uh, you know, they always stop at the Pioneers and tell the story about, oh, the Simpsons, blah, 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 blah. My grandfather made those in the early 20th century, 1918, um, commissioned by the University of Oregon, in which he gave up his copyright on those works. Now, check it. Those works are already in the public domain, so it doesn't matter at all, okay? Um, a few years back, the University of Oregon was thinking about uh, bulldozing them and replacing them with statues of Phil Knight. And, um, you know, my gramps, still kicking, was like, no. 
you can't do that. And they're like, yes, we can. We own, not only do we own the physical property, we owned the copyright on the works and they're in the public domain. We can do whatever we want. And Gramps is like, oh, hell no. I'm claiming VARA on that. Y'all can't do anything about that. I have a moral right over those works regardless because they're famous and they're not reproducible, um, et cetera. And he would win under VARA. Now, my grandfather did not do the Pioneer Sculptures. That's an example that's on the test. I'm just telling you now. Okay. Um, but I mean, any other type of example, say, um, you know, someone did a mural uh, on the ceiling in a hotel lobby and it's been there for 50 years. It's very iconic. People go there to take pictures of it. They take pictures with it, whatever. Um, and someone buys that hotel, a new developer buys that hotel and plans to bulldoze it. The artist could claim VARA and then the owner of the property would have to, depending on what a court said, they would maybe not be able to bulldoze the property. So it just basically means that, like, again, if your work is of recognized stature, it's known, you know, uh, you have control over that. You know, if it's on the side of the building, if you don't own that side of the building and it becomes iconic in your community or your state or your country or whatever, uh, you could uh, claim VARA on that. Um, you know, even if you made it for commission, don't own the copyright on it. And the copyright's still even valid. It doesn't matter. Artists have a moral right over their work if it meets those criteria. Okay? It's not copyright. It's not copyright. Wink, hint, nudge. It's not copyright. You don't have to have the copyright and you can claim VARA. Okay? But it is under uh, Title 17, Subsection 106A if you want to look it up when you're back on campus. So a recent example... Um, has to do with Five Points. Uh, Five Points was a graffiti mecca in Queens, part of uh, New York City. And uh, basically what it was is this property owner in like the 90s, early 90s, started, had a warehouse. You have to understand like New York City in the 80s and 90s was not like it is now. Uh, property was pretty affordable. New York had been coming out of like pretty much near bankruptcy and just just so different, mad crime, corruption, all that stuff. And this dude had a warehouse and, you know, nothing he could really do with it. And so he started renting it out space inside to artists to have studios. And then eventually uh, brought on, you know, some graffiti artists who were like, yo, we want to do art on the outside. And they gave, the building owner gave permission uh, to some people. And later, uh, Mears One, Jonathan Cohen, my, the home dude, um, gave him permission to be a curator where basically Mears would invite um, people, you know, famous graffiti writers, whatever, to do pieces uh, on the side of the building. And you know, New York has a real rich uh, hip hop history, obviously that's where hip hop came from, and a lot of hip hop tourism, believe it or not. And so like anybody who went to New York City as a tourist who was like into hip hop or was a graffiti writer or artist would go to Five Points. It was like a location. Thing is, is that, you know, someone would put up a piece and maybe a year later, two years later, uh, Mears would commission someone else to do a piece over it. It was just kind of how, how it was, but it was kind of like a living museum. Well, eventually the, the owner of the building, you know, as uh, real estate in New York City went through the roof, um, he basically said like, hey guys, you know, it's like 2012 or whatever, like, um, I'm done, you're done, five points is done. And a bunch of graffiti artists, basically fought they they fought that and they claimed vara and it went to court and um they you know they said hey this is a work of recognized stature and the court basically said i don't know if i you know the judge essentially said i don't know if i believe that argument because the works change you know because it wasn't like 25 graffiti pieces that were the same for 25 years it was different pieces every every once in a while it was works, not a work. And, but the judge said to the property owner, he said, but I would chill on your plans to, you know, rip the building down and, and do, 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 do all this stuff. You know, I would, I would chill out, you know, because I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they have a good, you know, thing. Well, the dude, the next day painted over every, he painted over everything, all the graffiti. 
and eventually, you know, um, you know, the guy uh, tried to trademark five points, and you can see this image. This is a virtual drawing of a graffiti, graffiti themed high rise apartments that he was going to build there. That did not look good for him. Now, the graffiti artists kept, 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 kept fighting. In 2017, a jury said, you know what? Five Points was a tourist destination. Itself maybe had works of art, but it, it was a work of recognized stature. And then it was like, oh, wow, a jury ruled that because they appealed. And then it went to a federal judge. And the federal judge would ultimately hand the ruling down. And in February 2018, the federal judge said, yep, this is a work of recognized stature. You get $6.7 million in damages, graffiti writers. The owner fought this still, and I believe I was talking to uh, you know, JS1, I don't know, a couple months back. He's appealed this and stuff like that, but they, they finally affirmed that the graffiti writers are going to get that paper from this guy. Um, but the landowner, right, like I said, he owned the land, but he, he allowed this to become a work of recognized stature, and therefore they were able to use VARA, um, although they didn't own the land. He tried to also say that uh, graffiti art is not art in court, which is just not a good, you know, oh, it's not art, you know, which, you know, any dimwit could see it's art, you know. Um, but it's significant because, you know, graffiti art aerosol art can be protected by VARA. It was the first time that VARA was used for aerosol art. So it was a pretty, pretty important decision uh, in, 28, in 2018. All right, so I want to watch a few clips. So we're going to watch a clip uh, about Ron English. I want you just to think about a couple things here, and then we're going to watch a clip uh, about the Bubble Project. I want you to think about what is free speech. I want you to think about what is corporate speech and are they the same things and do corporations deserve free speech? I want you to think about how these projects challenge, uh, you know, a one way monologue with advertising companies and us as consumers. And how can these types of things, graffiti art, street art, these types of more like um, uh, culture jamming projects, create a dialogue and why is that conversation important to have um, you know and obviously the work of Ron English is borderline infringement it's totally unauthorized but it's very interesting thought-provoking again just kind of like you know check these two out the bubble project uh, and Ron English and we'll chit chat about it <laughs> 